Chris Bukowski for Emerging Civil War. Delighted to have you with us. It is the 23rd of May, 2019. 155 years ago today, the armies were converging here along the banks of the North Anna River. Right behind me is the old road trace down to the Chesterfield Bridge. Robert E. Lee's army had crossed there, but they left a small force here on the north bank of the river. Uh, Joe Kershaw's former uh, division, uh, or former brigade, and uh, they're going to be occupying a set of fortifications back here that becomes known as Hennigan's Redoubt, named after Kershaw's replacement, John Hennigan. The, the uh, redoubt was actually built here in uh, 1863 in response to federal cavalry raids against Richmond. They put these fortifications up to guard the bridge. Uh, when Lee gets here, he wants to have a bridgehead on this side of the river just to help protect things as his stragglers and his wagon train is coming in. So uh, we've got four South Carolina regiments. They're going to have the 7th off to the field in that direction inside the redoubt itself, which is just inside that tree line on private property. Don't go there. Please respect the uh, the uh, privacy of the landowners. But in that redoubt itself is going to be the second South Carolina. Right here between the redoubt and the road is going to be the third South Carolina battalion, and then off in that direction will be the third South Carolina, connecting the uh, area between the bridge and the railroad bridge that's just down river a few hundred yards. Uh, if it gets a little windy on me here, I do apologize. Uh, we're out in nature, enjoying a beautiful, beautiful day out on the battlefield. So. Um, when Lee gets across the river, he's not expecting the Federals to come at him. He thinks they're going to uh, go south uh, and cross the Pamunkey River. So he's really surprised when the Federals start to deploy in what were fields out behind me now, opposite the river. The river now is that way. So the area behind me had been open fields once upon a time, and uh, Lee and his forces are quite surprised to see Federals as they start to deploy out there. Um, we're going to have um, David Bell Birney's division uh, getting ready to make its advance. We're going to have John Gibbon and uh, Francis Barlow off in that direction in support, trying to capture that railroad bridge. Uh, we've got Tyler's division further back uh, as uh, reinforcements, and then off in that direction, Gershom Mott is going to be trying to connect between here and uh, the Ox Ford. And uh, what's going to happen, um, these poor South Carolinians are first going to come under artillery fire because there's a nice ridge back in that direction. And uh, Winfield Scott Hancock's second corps is going to set up his artillery and start bombarding this position in order to try to drive the Confederates away and provide cover for the deploying Federals. And one Confederate says it's like sort of watching the deployment of this uh, Federal force was like in slow motion. And there was nothing they could really do about it to stop them. Um, and so they just kind of had to hunker down under this hellacious artillery fire and watch the Federals as they get ready. Um, the way things are going to come is we're going to have a pincher movement, a pincer movement, excuse me, that's going to squeeze in on all three sides. Uh, so we're going to have uh, uh, two brigades coming off in that direction. Uh, we'll catch my car in the background here. Two brigades kind of squeezing in in that direction. Um, Egan's brigade is going to split into two parts. So one part's going to come straight in like this. The other part's going to kind of squeeze in in that direction. And then as I mentioned, the other two divisions are pushing in that way to clear the railroad bridge. And um, as the Federals start crossing this open field, the Confederates are finally able to open fire on them. Um, these guys are going to have to kind of run the gauntlet. Um, but the, just the sheer weight of numbers is going to be too much. The 7th South Carolina posted down in that direction are going to be the first ones to collapse. They'll fall in, which then allows the Federals to come sweeping in and enclose the fortress. That's going to drive a lot of these uh, guys from the 3rd South Carolina Battalion back down into the river. The uh, fort itself, the redoubt itself, is actually protected by an eight-foot moat. So when Federals get there, they can't really just kind of scale the walls. Some of them will drive their rifles into the ground with by their bayonet and then support the stocks on their shoulders so that their colleagues can then sort of use these stacked rifles as stairs to get up over. Um, other soldiers will hoist each other up, um, you know, basically giving each other a, a leg up, boosting them up over and hurtling them over the top first few Federals over the works are kind of easy sitting ducks, but the sheer weight of numbers then drives those uh, South Carolinians out. There's only one place to go, and that's down a deep, a steep, steep embankment into the river itself. At one point, some Union officer on horseback grabs his regimental flag and rides up onto that embankment, somehow gets his horse up that, uh, that steep ditch. Um, and the South Carolinians who've been driven to the river, fe uh, Confederate support across the river, all stop shooting. They can't, um, just, they're just amazed. They can't believe this is happening. Um, one Confederate says it is actually just one of the most uh, incredible 
things that he has seen and they actually start cheering. They take off their hats and start cheering for this federal officer and his, uh, his colors on the top of the Confederate works after driving the Confederates into the river. Some of those Confederates drown, others are shot um, as they're trying to flee. Some try to set the bridge on fire, which would be down in that direction. Uh, the Federals are able to stop them from doing so, but down in that direction, down river a few hundred yards, I mentioned that railroad bridge, uh, Confederates will successfully set that on fire, uh, but they have a crossing. Um, Hancock is gonna send a few regiments to the far side of the bridge to establish a bridgehead and protect that bridge, and it's gonna be key because as I said, Lee wasn't expecting to have Federals here at all, and Federals now have a way to get across these steep banks of the river. Um, one of the reasons Lee wanted to be here was because the embankments created such a strong defense. He didn't take advantage of that, and now Federals have a free pass. Hancock calls this one of the most brilliant victories of the war. He's perhaps exaggerating a little bit, specifically because, uh, keeping in mind, uh, that way uh, several miles is Jericho Mills. The 5th and 6th Corps are getting across there. The 5th Corps in particular will find itself engaged pretty heavily. We did a cool video down there a few weeks ago with the American Battlefield Trust. I'll point you to their uh, website. You can see it on their Facebook page and their YouTube page. Um, so I'm not going to rehash all the action down there, but that's certainly a huge, huge victory as well. And now Lee has got serious problems because he has Federals across the river down there and Federals with an easy way across the river here. What to do, what to do. Hmm. The old gray fox who is uh, suffering from illness at this point, suffering from exhaustion, is now suffering from a bad case of Federals ready to breathe down my neck what to do. We'll talk about that tomorrow. I'm Chris Bukowski for Emerging Civil War.